Good morning, everybody. I am Dr. Kanu Charanapatro, radiation oncologist. I, in my radiology class today, I will discuss about the normal buccal mucosa cancers and normal radiology of buccal mucosa, how it looks like and how uh, it looks like in a different uh, histologies as well as the normal invasion. If you see in the left, uh, left side, this is the mandible. There is no difficulty in identifying and this is the skin. This is the skin and this is the mandible. The area is the bounded by this is the buccinator muscle and the area between the buccinator muscle and the mandible, the buccal mucosa here. So if you see the buccal mucosa here, you can see in the right side there is no mass. You can there is a black head space and at least uh, this is the adjacent buccal mucosa and the buccinator muscle. But in see the left side, the big arrow what is showing there is a growth. In this growth, you cannot see visualize whether it is a mandible involved or not. So in this juncture, we have to uh, uh, there is a technique called popped cheek technique. So this is a popped cheek technique. When you are taking a oral mucosa or CA buccal mucosa cancers, you just ask the patient to make a popped cheek. If you popped cheek, you can see the, the buccinator muscle is tensed and you can find out the lesion here properly. You can see the lesion here, the arrow what is they are showing here. The lesion is clearly visible and it is not um, attached to the mandible and mandible is totally free. So you can identify this is the buccal mucosa here and this is the buccal mucosa in the left and this is the long arrow and this is the lesion here. Let's go. Here I will show you deep another picture. This star mark is the buccinator muscle. This is the zygomaticus measure. This is the parotid duct. That is a opening it on the second molar area. And this is the masseter muscle, M the return. So this is the normal uh, structure around, this is the mandible. And this is the orbicularis orish muscle. And this is the normal buccal mucosa adjacent structures. So if you see other the opposite to the uh, uh, left, left side of the image, this is the orbicularis oris and levator anguli oris. These are two muscles here you can see and continue with the buccinator muscle. So if you see the puffed cheek technique, you can swing the oral cavity proper. This is a hard pellet. This is the mandible. This is the tongue. This is the floor of mouth. This is a central cavity and that is oral cavity proper and lateral to puffed cheek areas. It is called the vestibule. This is called the vestibule. And this is called lower gingival sulcus that is attached to the mandible. And this is the upper gingival sulcus. This is the upper gingival sulcus. This is the lower gingival sulcus. And by this is a, uh, this is a buccal mucosa closely abutted with the buccinator muscle. So if you see XL CT, another popped cheek technique, you can see the growth and this picture I have shown earlier also. This is the popped cheek muscle, uh, that, uh, uh, this is the normal uh, buccal mucosal cancer left side. With popped cheek, you can, you, here you cannot differentiate the growth from the mandible, whether mandible is involved or not. If you see the popped cheek technique, you can see, identify properly, this is the lesion is confined to the buccal mucosa only, not invasion to the mandible. So popped cheek technique is a very much important and to understand this uh, buccal mucosa cancers. Here, another cancer, it is a coronal view with puffed cheek technique. You can see here, this is the lower GBS, this is the upper GBS of left side, this is the upper GBS and lower GBS of the right side. You can see the growth here involving the gingiva buccal sulcus. Here the growth is involving the gingiva buccal sulcus. So, in case, in this case, if the mandibulectomy or some, uh, they, will, uh, they will do the surgical operations here. So you can in, see the, in this case, you can see when the most of the blood fill are planning for brachytherapy, it is not possible when there is involving the gingiva vocal sulcus. You can see the length of mandible involved here. You can find out and this, you can see the ulcerated lesion here, pro, ulcer proliferative growth here, this proliferative, prolifer mostly proliferative growth here, you can find out here. Another structure, another area is called a uh, retromoral trigon. Retromoral tri trigon is the name it signifies 
the area of the uh, oral cavity just posterior to the last molar retromolar so it is a trigonal trigon of retromolar area you can see in those uh, graphical pictures also the rmt area and this is the rmt area and this is the hard palate subpalate junction and we can see here that the space and this space is clear if you see the any malignancies arising from this this is if, you, if this is the, the star mark is the male terigo mandibular rafe and uh, this is the buccal mucosa here again this is the puffed cheek technique and this radium uh, the mandible uh, this uh, uh, rmt areas it can go adjacent to the buccal mucosa it goes to the mandible it goes to the masseter muscle that is goes to the uh, um, um, uh, super elite again it can go to the maxilla and uh, pterygoid area and this is going to to the tonsil and this is the tongue so any uh, the, this is the juncture of here any malignancy starts from here it go any way any directions so if you if, if you see here this is a buccal mucosal cancer that is involving the upper gbs here you can see this is upper right upper gbs is free here but here left upper gbs it is involved and you can see this mandible this is the by sorry this is the maxilla uh, wall of the maxilla it is eroded and inverted the maxilla and involving the maxillary cavity you can see here lesions there is a ulcerated lesion on the skin and there is a air cavity you can see here the uh, um, clearly it is visible that is a, there is a ulcerated as well as the, the skin ulceration you can visualize it properly so this is called orocutaneous fistula you can call also and uh, the, the, that invading the skin so you can see the identify easily with pop cheek technique um, with that is invasion in the maxillary cavity you can see here another buccal mucosa lesion uh, involving the this is the lateral pterygoid muscle you can see the involving the pterygoid muscle and maxillary cavity and it is close to the foramen ovale into the internal uh, over to the intracranial extension so high masticator stress and normal of, uh, 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 you can see in the bone window you can see the foramen ovale here with enhancement in the perineural invasion and it goes to the foramen ovale when there is a lower alveolar lesion with near mandibular foramen if you see that the it is inverting in, in the inferior, inferior alveolar nerve that is a major nerve and if they are giving in the uh, histopathology report you have to trace and treat the uh, area um, uh, till the skull base and the infratemporal fossa you have to treat otherwise there is a chances of high recurrence area uh, getting the intracranial extension and pni with pni another thing here this is a rmt area you can see here the growth is rmt area and is it going extended to the uh, uh, tonsil and uh, showing the it, you can see here it is a mandibular invasion here you can see here this is in the bone window this is the mandibular invasion and uh, superate is a pterygopalatine fossa here involved this is the maxilla and this is a pterygo plate you can see this uh, below the pterygium uh, there is a pterygopalatine fossa involved we can see the normal fat density in the opposite pterygopalatine fossa but here you can see the pterygopalatine involvement maxillary involvement masseter involvement and mandibular involvement so how you see rmt area is involving the uh, here it is involved the tongue, tonsil, mandible, maxilla, pterygopalatine fossa. So, uh, RMT is area is the chances of uh, my invasion is very high and uh, in advanced stages. So, clearly, uh, you have to take pop the cheek technique, you have to see the mandible, see the buccal mucosa, and, uh, and handling the RMT is very tough. Another thing is that this is another buccal mucosal cancer where it is involving the uh, uh, invading the masseter here and just approaching the RMT here, right mural trigon, uh, retromural trigon. But you see in the left side there is an RMT free here. So this is the ulcerated lesion and uh, this is involving the muscle, uh, masseter muscle, and you can see this here. In another another uh, lesion, if you see the left side. The men, this is the mandible, uh, ramus of the mandible, it is eroded and uh, pterygoid muscle also eroded in this RMT area, mandible uh, also eroded and involving the buccal mucosa. 
so this is the how the rmt malignancy spread here you can see one thing the this is the left buccal mucosal lesion if this is the right buccal mucosal lesion and this is the thickness you see in the box center area this pop it is not a pop to chip technique so you cannot tell directly that there is a involvement of the mandible so if you see this is the lesion the buccal mucosal lesion involving the uh, masseter and uh, this is the involving the mandible and this is the involving the rmt area you can see retromolar tigron area how it is involved and we have to handle carefully and just to go go with the proper ct scan here i can go tell you one example where this is the mucoepidermoid carcinoma of the buccal mucosa it is mostly arises from the minor salivary gland mostly arises from the minor salivary gland it is a mostly it is a nodule like structure and it is not invade the buccal mucosa it, you can you can see the smoothness of the uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma minor salivary glands you can see here this nodule is so nicely enhancing and uh, mostly confined to the buccal where there will not there is no mucosal ulceration or, or any other thing you can see here smoothly confined under the buccal mucosa so if there is a smooth nodular structure palpated on the uh, below the buccal mucosa there is no ulceration there is a high chance of minor salivary glands tumor or my uh, this is a mucoepidermal carcinoma buccal mucosa okay as i know as i told before this is a big buccal mucosal ulcer involving the floor of mouth skin you can see here the skin involvement and you can see the muscles neck muscles involvement and the skin ulceration and there is ulcerative as well as a skin ulceration in the orocutaneous fistula another thing is that sometimes the growth is involving the alveolus so this buccal mucosa sir looks smooth in the popricic technique whether the uh, in normal without popricic technique you cannot know whether lesion is arriving from the arising from the buccal mucosa or lower alve I mean alveolus with popricic technique you can see this this is the lesion here but here though there is no lesion here you can see here the lesion properly uh this is very nicely visible that ulcerated lesion that the prolonged uh, growth is involved in the lower alveolus here you can see the right alveolus it's totally free there is a no uh, soft tissue here but you can see this is soft tissue and with slight mandibular erosion or there are not uh, it is just we have to see the one end but you can see this uh, this is the um, ulcerated I mean, this is the growth in the in the lower alveolus so uh, most uh, yeah, this is a good article by dr suprita aridya dr devendra choker and prathamas bhai from tata memorial hospital you can go through this article i have taken some pictures from this article and it's a very good article and uh, uh, you can understand more hope i have explained everything in nice way and uh, remember when you are sending a patient to for the buccal mucosal lesion for to the radiologist right please do in a pop chick technique ask the patient to make a pop so that you can see that lesion is arising from the buccal mucosa or alveolus whether alveolus is involved or not it is easy to understand thank you very much we will come with a different type of video in next uh, next uh, session